But let's introduce our next guest. Her first novel is topping the Irish book charts and she's been hailed as the next Jilly Cooper. So saddle up and please welcome Ali Bunbury. You're very, very welcome Hi. on the couch. Hi. Um, <laughs> Lovely to be here. <laughs> Lovely to have you. And obviously your book is doing really, really well at the moment. Thank you. I hear, heard that it's a cross between Bridget Jones and The Devil Wears Prado, is that an accurate...? Well, that is definitely what I'm hearing, and which is... Which is great. ...deeply exciting, because I love both those um, stories. As do I. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I guess it is, uh, it is a love story, really, more than anything else. Right. And um, it's when Anna Rose, who is mm -hmm. an Irish girl like me, and she arrives in London to work for the PR queen, who is Gilda Winterbottom. And Gilda is a force to be reckoned with, and she spends her days whining and dining the media. Everything is washed down with a lot of champagne. Good times. <laughs> and uh, Anna um, finds herself at a, at a party and she meets George Wyndham, who is a very handsome art dealer, okay. who's Scottish, and uh, they fall in love and all is going really nicely until um, George has got to pay the price for the actions of his father in the past. Okay. And this involves a very beautiful actress, very beautiful and gorgeous, and... Um, uh, Spanner in the works, big time. And George, anyway, has to make a really awful decision. And there's heartbreak. I'm, actually, people tell me that they laugh along with the characters, they cry, it seems to be... Which quite, is exactly what you want. Which yeah, I know, which is... And is Anna based on you? Um, there... No, the book is entirely fiction. Okay. I'm very sure. <laughs> um, All right, so it's definitely based on her. Completely <laughs> <laughs> based. But, um, but I guess, you know, uh, they always say that, that every writer puts a little bit of themselves into every character. Um, yeah. And that, I think, would go for all of them. Right. Um, well, well so they the... say write what you know about. And yes. you, you worked in Well, PR. that's the thing. That's the thing. I, um, I started my pre PR career in New York and then I transferred to London and it was a very fast life, you know, exciting, great fun, burning the candle at both ends and uh, so pretty full on. Um, but then when um, my father back home in Ireland became ill and uh, when he finally passed away, it was it was a very emotional time and um, I, I guess a great friend said, you know, if you're going to be unhappy, why not be unhappy in Paris? And so the next thing I know, having a very understanding boss. I took, as they say in America, a personal sabbatical, and um, I moved to a very gorgeous little apartment on Rue Saint-Dominique, which is very close to the Eiffel Tower, and I found myself in a bright yellow kitchen with a tall, tall window, lots of light, and uh, a lovely wooden table, and I sat down, and I think I wrote my heart out. In a way, it was therapy, so I, was, I guess I was grieving at the time, mm -hmm. and I just wrote my way through it. And that was where the inheritance was, if not born, conceived. OK. Yeah. Uh, as you started to tell us that story, you looked as if you were right back in that moment. Yes. I mean, it's still, it's, you know, the book for me is, I'm so proud of it. And when um, Paul Begg um, took, the, accepted the book, I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I literally cried for about four days. I was, and and um, Paula Campbell was just so incredible. She really nurtured me as mm. a writer and she made it what it is. Well, you know, we worked together on it and it was just um, amazing. But um, I think uh, the, the, it is a love story. It's in, interesting because the characters feel hugely sentimental about the houses that they come yeah. from. George, who is, you know, the, the hero of the story, um, he comes from a sort of a Downton Abbey equivalent in Scotland. Okay. And when his house is in jeopardy, when he might lose it, um, it's not just the materialistic part of it that he's worried about. It's actually the history. Yeah. You know, it's the memories in the walls. So there's layers to the book and oh. backstories, yes. great backstories. With and all you're the talking characters. about a house that goes back generations. <laughs> generations, yeah. exactly. And you can't buy back that sort of history. Yeah. So um, I really loved, and I loved the research of that part of the book, because I am a history fan right. myself. Girls, would you be big readers? I mean, obviously, Rosanna, you're an author yourself as well. Would you be big into fiction? A little bit of escapism? Certainly on holiday. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just don't feel like I have an awful lot of spare time in you know normal yeah. weeks, but absolutely on holiday, I seem to devour books. Yeah, so. be, be yeah. I would be the yeah. same. You'd be the same. Yeah. yeah, you know when when I'm when I've got the time and on yeah. holiday. Exactly, and obviously as well, you've been hailed as the Irish Julie Cooper. So be quite uh, yeah. crazy. <laughs> in your book, would you say the inheritance has a few steamy scenes, or um, I would say naughty more than steamy. Okay, a little bit naughty <laughs> in places, um, but I think that more as a tender tender romance. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so it's kind of open to suggestion rather than just yes, painting yes. the picture. Yes, 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 yes. And um, I... Oh, I did hear there's a back scene with two girls, so... 
That's oh. <laughs> Just say it. What, what Samantha was reading out the weekend is her business. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but I am, I am, I loved, I loved Jilly Cooper. And Jilly Cooper was one of the first authors that I started reading um, in so boarding school. she was an inspiration school. as well. She was a big inspiration, right. yeah, for sure. Um, but I would say <laughs> it's, it's great fun. There are, there are you know, it, there are sad moments in the book, but it's very uplifting is what I'm hearing. You know, it's, right. it's fun. OK, but, but what, what we've been told about the book is that it will take us on a journey to various places. Yes, it will take you to LA, it'll take you to Paris, it'll take you to Edinburgh, it will take you to the border counties of beautiful Ireland and the rolling drumlins. It will take you to London. It brings you into old, old houses. It brings you into urban settings. Lots of luxury, lots of privilege, lots of money, but lots of emotion, lots of champagne. In fact, <laughs> I have a mug which um, my wonderful friend Lucy gave me and it says in the front, I'd rather be drinking champagne. And that is my favourite writing mug. So when I'm drinking coffee in the morning... And <laughs> you're reminded nice. of why you're going to finish the day. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, so it is, yes. I mean, it's amazing where you can travel to from your kitchen table. Mm. And a lot cheaper. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no air miles. Now, I know you're working on a second book at the yes. moment. Is that kind of a sequel to The Inheritance, or is that completely unrelated? I wouldn't call it a sequel. Okay. There, um, <clears throat> there are certainly connections. So it does um, okay. tie in. It, there, there is, so there is, there is a tie. Okay. There is a tie. And, and I, I just love the names of the characters in your book. You know, uh, uh, Gilda Winterbottom. Is she a cold I ass? Gilda. I love Gilda. <laughs> Gilda is amazing. She is so uplifting. She's completely nuts. I mean, she is the PR queen. She lives and breathes publicity. And uh, you actually learn, I mean, I, when I was writing about Gilda, I learned so much from her because her, her energy, she's just got a can-do attitude and there is nothing that, you know, that she can't make happen. And um, it's a great way to be, mm -hmm. you yes. know. OK, <clears throat> well, well, we're about eight weeks away from the summer and they say the best place to have your book is in the airports when the summer arrives. So uh, it just might be popping up around swimming pools. Well, I hope so. Hours. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in the airport at the moment, in all no? of them, I think. Yeah. So you've no excuse. Uh, listen, it's been a joy talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. To talk to us. Thank you. And uh, now, let's go over to Darina, who's uh, getting herself set in the kitchen for a real sweet treat after the break. Yes, I am. Uh, we're going to have some theatrics, perhaps, making some <laughs> honeycomb. We've got a fire blanket. We're ready for it. What um, ingredients are we going to need for this? We're going to need a lot of chocolate, white and dark, condensed milk, butter, sugar, Golden syrup, uh, popcorn, so all the good stuff. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and, and okay. All calorie free. <laughs> all calorie, as always. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, listen, make sure you stay tuned for that and we'll see you back here in a few. <laughs>